Brothers Gaming. Hello, folks, and welcome back to a brand new week of Bub Brothers Gaming with Ethan playing Stardew Valley. You know, I, I was going to continue the Darkest Dungeon series, but I figured, you know, we need something a little bit happier. Times are tough, you know? Times are tough, so we need to get back into it with a little bit happier side of the mania. So let's jump right into it, shall we? Alright, so... We're going to name our guy, let's see here. We're going to name him Ethan. But Farm name. Hmm, I should have probably thought of this a little bit better. <sighs> let's see, there's some farms around where I live. They're normally named after, like, either the family or the land, like, type. Like, Rolling Hills Estate. Um, let's see. Or, like, it's like a pun off of what they raise. Like, just kidding, goat farm! <laughs> um, let's think here. Um, uh, man, I don't even know. Let's, uh, let's combine me and Drew's name. Let's, let's do, uh, hmm. E. E. <laughs> Ethal. Ethal. I don't know. Oh man, I should have thought this better. Ethan Drew. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's fine. Touch. Yeah. My favorite thing is touch. Alright, so let's see. Alright. That is probably pretty representative of my hair at the moment. It is kind of out of control. I really need a haircut. Let's see. You know, I would normally wear like a shirt like that, but this we're farming, you know. Let's uh let's see. Probably wear like a nice like corduroy jacket. Something like that. Let's see, what's this though? Oh mutton chops. Gotta say, I'm a fan. And I guess I guess we'll go with the kitty. Cause fun fact cats actually um, were first domesticated whenever a society starts farming in the past so nice little tidbit there all right so time to get all emotional and for my very special grandson I want you to have the sealed envelope screw you grandpa I don't want it no 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 <laughs> don't open it yet have patience. Now listen close, because I can only say this one time before I die. There will come a day when you feel crushed by the burden of modern life. <laughs> and your sprite spirit will fade before a growing emptiness. Damn, I didn't know my grandpa was Nietzsche. And when that happens, my boy, You'll be ready for this gift. <laughs> oh god. What is this? Now let grandpa rest. 20 years later. Wow, okay. So, I must have been pretty young when he died. My character does not look that old. I'd say my character looks like he's in his 20s. No. Oh. Yeah, I used to work in a place like this. We didn't even have our own cubicles, though. So, I don't know. This is debatably worse. <laughs> oh, wait. There's a skeleton. No, no. This is debatable. This is definitely worse. There's also cameras on everyone. That's pretty screwed up. Oh. Dear Ethan Bub. Grandpa, you know my, my internet name. If you're reading this, you must be in dire need of a change. That same thing happened to me long ago. When I lost sight of what mattered most in life. Real connections with other people and nature. So I dropped everything and moved to this place I truly belong. <sighs> There's some irony in this game, but anyway. I've <laughs> closed this deed to that place. My pride and joy. The Ethan Drew Farm. 
I should have really thought that through better. It's located in Stardew Valley on the southern coast. It's the perfect place to start your new life. This was my most precious gift of all. And now it's yours. Oh, Grandpa. I know you'll honor the family name, my boy. Good luck. Love, Grandpa. Aw. P.S. If Lewis is still alive, say hi to that, ass to that asshole for me, would you? Oh, Grandpa. You're hilarious. <laughs> I wish it would have said that so bad. <laughs> say hello to that relationship ending wife fucking asshole. Grandpa, what what are you saying about Grandma? I mean, she didn't die of, of a heart attack? <laughs> no, and then bury herself in a grave? She didn't do that? What are you telling me, Grandpa? In an unmarked grave, let's be honest. Okay. Hello, you must be Ethan Bubb. Hey, Robin. I'm Robin, the local carpenter. I, I saw the name. You don't have to tell me. Major... Major... Major Lewis sent me here to fetch you. <laughs> and show you to the mess. <laughs> show you the way to your home. He's there right now, tidying things up for your arrival. Wow. The farm's right over here, if you'll follow me. All right. Well... <laughs> farm quotation marks this is the Ethan true farm pretty much sums up us our uh, our personalities <laughs> pretty well chaotic dirty yeah sure it's a bit overgrown but there's some good soil underneath that mess that's true weeds wouldn't choose it if it wasn't good right with a little dedication you'll have cleaned it up in no time I'm gonna touch. Here we are, your new home. Oh god, this is gonna turn into a porn, isn't it? And, <laughs> ah, the new farmer. This is definitely gonna turn into a porn. Welcome, Lou. I'm Lewis, mayor of Pelican Town. You, you know, everyone's been asking about you. And I have a present for you in my hand. And this, not every one day, someone new moves in. I find myself longing for you. <laughs> so you're moving into your grandfather's old cottage. It's a good house, very rustic. I'm gonna gentrify the fuck out of this house. Rustic? That's one way to put it. Crusty might be a little bit more apt, though. RUDE! <laughs> Don't listen to her, Ethan. She's just trying to make you dissatisfied so that you buy one of her house upgrades. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, she's horrible in bed. You must be tired from the launcher. <laughs> you should get some rest. Tomorrow you ought to explore the town a bit and introduce yourself. The townspeople would appreciate that. Alright. We can do that. I'll introduce them to my mutton chops. Oh, I almost forgot. If you have anything to sell, I'll just place it in the box here. I'll come by during the night and collect it. Well, good luck. Well, that's super nice. <laughs> Fucking rooster woke me up again. All right. Well, hang on. All right. Save my... I played this a little bit. Auto run, and that needs to be on. I don't know why those two things are not on. All right. I think we're okay resolution-wise. I don't know. Whoa! Right! You received 15 parter snip seeds. Here's a little something to get you started. Thanks, man. Let's see what's on TV. Living off the land. Welcome to Live It Off The Land. We're back again with another tip for y'all. <laughs> Listen up. This one's for all you greenhorns out there. Chop wood and search wild forage to earn some cash while waiting on your first harvest. Wow, longest uh, TV show ever. 
Welcome to KOZU5, your number one source for weather, news, and entertainment. And now the weather forecast for tomorrow. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be a beautiful sunny day tomorrow. Took me back to my. Oh God, um, took me back to my radio days. I was on my school radio. Welcome back to Well, Well Wicks. That's a weird name. Oracle. If you seek hidden knowledge of the future, well, you've come to the right place. The spirits are mildly perturbed today. Luck will not be on your side. Here's a bat. <laughs> All right, so let's get going. Um, I know he said we should go visit people, but I want to. I want to get this a little bit cleared first. Let's clear this out a little bit. Get those plants. Damn it. Get those plants planted. <laughs> Alright. There we go. And let's chop down a tree. Honestly, have you ever chopped down a live tree? I guarantee you haven't, because <laughs> it is impossible. Especially a full grown tree. Like, the games make it seem way easier than what it is. Like, you'd be there all day, and you'd be about halfway through, probably. Okay, so, let's see, I got 15 seeds, so, let's do a row of 8 and 7, yeah, that'll do it, so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then down here we'll do 8, ow, damn it, 8, there we go, um, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven. Okay, now. Right. Boop, that was in. This is how you plant seeds. You put the seed above your head and it comes out your shoes. Uh, <laughs> Alright, now we'll water them. In the beginning of this game, it's more like gardening than farming, but hey, whatever. <laughs> Eventually, you can build sprinklers and soil that retains the moisture a little bit better. So then you don't have to water it every day. Honestly, sprinklers aren't really worth building unless you got some specialty plants going, at least in this game. Because it only waters the four squares touching it, at least until you get further up. I did a little bit of research. <laughs> cough, cough, Reddit, cough, cough. Okay, let's see. Boop, boop. Brap. Okay. So... Oh, you know what I want to build? I want to build a chest to hold my stuff. So, let's do that. Snap and away. Cut destroying the local wildlife. Because humans are better than other animals. Ugh, still have a little bit more to go here. Let's gather some dead wood because that's perfect for building things. <laughs> wood that's been lying on the ground usually is quality wood to build with. <laughs> uh, let's make sure it falls that way. There we go. Alright, got some sap. Sap, once you get better, you can turn in the fertilizer. And you get a chance of growing better stuff. So, let's go ahead and build that. Nice little chest. That's a nice looking chest. <laughs> Alright, so, I don't want that. That can go back in there. I think I'll keep the rest. Alright. So, we got that put in. Very good. We'll do some decorating either tonight or tomorrow. I don't know. So... Now we're heading in the town. This is the bus station where we came in. There's some wild plants you can pick like that. Live off the land. So dandelion, you can eat it. And it does give you nutrition. Oh, let's see. Getting started, yep. We started the crop and we also need to meet with people. Okay. So this game's pretty interesting. It's like a RPG farming thing. You know, I'm not too familiar with Harvest Moon. I never really had a Nintendo gaming console to play it on, but they say it's very similar to that. And once, okay, so every calendar, basically, 
is a season. So once it gets to the 28th, spring is over and summer begins and so on and so forth. And then until then there's egg festivals and flower dances and people's birthdays. Yay. And then that's the local town board. Oh, and here is motherfucking Pierre. Fancy motherfucker. Sorry, I'm swearing a lot today. Uh, let's see. Should I? Hmm. I never grew flowers. That might be worth looking into. Let's do, let's do like four. And let's see, what else cheap do we have? Um, let's do beans, I guess. Ah, let's do potatoes. Four. Maybe, can we do six? Yeah, we can do six. All right, cool. Oh, that's right. I got to talk to everybody. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, it's Mr. Ethan Bub, the new farmer. I'm Pierre, owner of the local general store. Obviously, we're in it. <laughs> if you're looking for seeds, my shop is the place to go. I'll also buy produce from you for a good price. Thanks, Pierre. A little agriculture could really inject new life into the local economy. Ooh, I like your hair. Oh, that's right. I heard someone new is moving into that old farm. It's kind of a shame, really. I always enjoyed exploring those overgrown fields by myself. Aw, you're an introvert. I respect that. Ah, uh, here's Marnie. Ah, uh, Mayor Lewis told me about you. About you. <laughs> that told me you just arrived. Holy crap. I'm Marnie. Hi, Marnie. I sell livestock and animal care products at my ranch. You should swing by sometime. Especially since we're neighbors. She lives... I live here. She lives down here. So yeah, this is the whole map. There's also, you can explore the mountains. I never got into the forest yet, but apparently there that's a thing. And there's also like a desert and there's a railroad up here. Like I, there's just so much I haven't even scratched the surface of. Hey Sam. Hey, I'm Sam. Good to meet you. Thanks Sam. Wait, who's this? Who's this guy or girl? Oh, Leah. You know, she's the girl I want to marry. I don't know, I just like her. You picked up, you picked a good time to move here. Spring is lovely. She like, she's hard to talk to though because she lives in the middle of nowhere and she locks herself in her house. It's a pleasure to meet you, I'm Harvey, local doctor. Hey Harvey. I perform regular checkups and medical procedures to all the residents of Pelican Town. It's rewarding work, I would say. I hope you'll find your own work equally rewarding in time. You know, that's what it's all about. Self-actualization, right? Like Pavlov or... Is that Pavlov? Yeah, I think Pavlov said that. Hi. Hi, Penny. Oh, did you want something? No. No. I didn't. Just saying hi. You're not too charismatic. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, you can get married in this game. I didn't specify that earlier. I just don't say that about random people I meet. Okay, here's blue-haired Les. Ooh, I can read it on your face. You're going to love it here in Pelican Town. If you're ever looking for something to do in the evening, stop by the saloon. <laughs> That's where I work. <laughs> Mine instantly in the gutter. Instantly. <laughs> oh, Jesus. If you're looking for something to do, I'm in the saloon. <laughs> At night, you should swing by. <laughs> for something to do. Oh, a stranger. My name's Vincent. Mama says not to talk to strangers, but you're okay. You seem okay. Well, you know, most people are. Oh, you're not exactly how I imagined, but that's okay. I'm Jody. Hi, Jody. It's a quiet little town, so not very exciting when someone... So it's very exciting when someone new moves in. Having a farmer around could really change things. I just got a text from my mom. She's out cutting wood, apparently. And she goes, it's a beautiful day in the woods. Only I would ever get a text like that. <laughs> I'll text you back, Mom, I promise. Just want to finish this episode. Oh, there's an elderly lady. I like to pretend she's Asian. Why, hello, and welcome to our little community, dear. She doesn't have an Asian accent, though. Like, Asian American. You can call me Granny if you like. 
have more world experience than that. I realize your accent al doesn't always match your ethnicity. Hello. <laughs> you must be Ethan Bub, the new farmer. I'm Caroline. Sweet Caroline. My husband. Oh. Oh. You're Pierre's wife. You ever see my daughter Abigail? She's the one with the purple hair. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've met Abigail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's see. Can we go in the saloon yet? Yes, that opens at 12. Hungry, thirsty. Uh, oh, spaghetti. Interesting. Yeah, coffee is actually something worth investing money in because it makes you move faster. Well, hello there. I'm Gus, chef and owner of Stardrop Saloon. All right, good for you. Yep. You're always welcome here. Is it because I'm white? You guys uh, segregate? Because I, I know that happens in country settings. Like, you don't have it on the door or anything, but... You know, person of color walks in and everyone gets uncomfortable for no reason. Okay. Maru. Meru, like the cat. Oh, aren't you the new one who moved in? I'm Meru. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Actually, her dad's black, so I guess they're okay with it. You know, with a small town like this, a new face can really alter the community dynamic. Great. Is this where we get the math? Um, hi. Hi. No? Um, okay. Well, uh, you, uh, you keep doing you. <laughs> Don't know your name. That's the mayor's house. He has a car that's permanently blocked in. Like, where is he driving that thing? Like, it's... It's not going anywhere. Everything's footpaths. Let's see here. Oh, this is the local school slash archaeology center. Hello there! Welcome to Stardew Valley Archaeological Office. Uh, this is embarrassing, but the previously curator made off with the entire collection. We don't have any artifacts for display. But I'm hoping to remedy that soon. Hey, if you find any artifacts or minerals out there, would you let me know? Yes, I feel bad for you. That is pretty funny, though. I'm just taking all this shit with me. All right. That's perfectly acceptable for some reason. We don't have a police department, so who's stopping you? Oh, wow, he's closed already. He just closed. Darn it. Well, okay. Let's head back. Is there someone? I know there are some people we haven't talked to, but I think we got. Oh wait, there is the supermarket, which I don't know. Oh, are you Pam? Hey Pam. Don't be a jerk, and we'll get along fine. I like to pretend she's like a smoker. She lives in the trailer, and she's obviously there to represent stereotypical trailer culture. Which, fun fact, that was me at one point. <laughs> My my parents got divorced once too. My dad and me moved into a trailer, and in in a trailer park for like I think it was like a couple years. I didn't care. It was fun. It was the most social I was like as a kid ever because I didn't get along with anyone in my <laughs> class. Not until I got older, at least. I was just so hyper and abrasive, I guess. And, uh, also, my parents weren't from that area, so I didn't have, like, common country interests. Like, I liked animals, and I liked farm stuff, but for some reason, that wasn't big in my class. My class, it was all about, like, outdoorsman stuff, which I respect, but it's not really for me. Okay, so, like, I, I like, like, now I like it to a point um hang on let's plant these flowers i don't even know if they give me a crop or are they just purely aesthetic things i don't know let's water them ah missed but yeah i uh growing up that's how things were it's pretty annoying but yeah living in a trailer park was actually pretty fun i made uh made a lot of good friends 
Uh, I better eat. Stand a line. <laughs> Running out of energy. There we go. That should hold us over. Um. Yeah, like I just remember. Wait, that's not what I want. I want the hoe. I want that hoe. I just remember like hanging out with a lot of the, like there was a lot of kids in that trailer park and I just remember hanging out with them and like playing with them and just having a good time. It was pretty interesting. I couldn't tell you for the life of me where it is though. I have no, uh, like I was really young when that happened. <laughs> Not incredibly young, like I think I was like six or seven. I just do not remember where it is. And my dad's not around anymore because he passed away when I was 16. So I can't even ask him. I, I don't I don't know where it is. Because <laughs> we uh, then we eventually, my dad got a, his finances in order. And we ended up buying the trailer and taking it to nine acres of ground in the middle of nowhere that we inherited. Which was actually a, better in different ways. But I don't know. It was nice living. You know, very private. But... Also very, uh, isolating, which was, I don't know, kind of shaped who I am today, for sure. Definitely an introvert. Hello there, just got back from fishing trip. You should come down to the beach sometime. I've got something for you. Okay, Willie. You don't even know me. You're giving me gifts. You're a good guy. <coughs> this is basically, like... How small town America was before Fox News was invented? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's like, hey, everyone's nice. Sure. I'm excited to meet people. Now it's like, ah, everyone's the enemy. Don't talk to anyone. Can't trust anyone. Honestly, it wasn't just Fox News. I'd say it was corporate uh, network news. Because there it was like, everyone's getting kidnapped because we're reporting on everything throughout the whole country. So obviously, you're going to see some negative things. Anyway, so at this point, I think we're going to cut things off for the first episode. My name is Ethan, and this is Stardew Valley on Bub Brothers Gaming. And we'll catch you tomorrow, folks. See you then.